guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you what I'm going to call a miscellaneous reads video. This is the last two books I read in May, and then three books that I read in June that I didn't get into my last video. So, first of all, I wanted to say thank you to everybody that left me a comment on my last video. Everybody was so nice and, you know, encouraging, and I just, it made me feel a lot better about all the doubts I've been having lately, so I'm going to continue making my videos for now. I do like making them, and also, this is going to sound conceited, but I like going back and watching them again, too, like the old ones, just to see what I was reading and what my life was like back then, so I'm going to keep on doing them, but thank you again for all your nice comments, but now let's just get into the books. The first book I want to mention is A Midwife's Tale, The Life of Mark. Martha Ballard, based on her diary, 1785 to 1812. And I think I already raved about this one in my, a few videos ago, but I just really wanted to talk about it now that I've finished it, because it ended up being such a great book. I actually started this last May, May 2019, and I didn't, I stopped it because I was on vacation, and then I put it on my TBR for nonfiction November, and then I just kept moving it over to the next month and finally in May, I, this past May, May 20th, May 2020, I read it and I really, really enjoyed it. This is a social history and it, as it says in the subtitle, it's following the life of Martha Ballard, who was a midwife in Hallowell, Maine in the late 1700s, early 1800s and it's just talking about all the different facets of life back then and also how this time period was sort of a shift in thinking about medical medicine and like medical treatment because it's uh it talks about like the natural medicines you know holopathic or homeopathic medicine versus allopathic medicine and allopathic medicine was becoming more popular it talks about marriage and how like back then it was common for people to get married because they were getting ready to have a baby and then they would have set up housekeeping later so premarital sex was like pretty common back then and it also talks about rape it talks about like family dynamics it talks about the economy and the women's economy versus the male economy and it's just talked about all kinds of fascinating aspects of life back then and I found it really engaging and really intriguing and I would definitely recommend it if you're interested in learning more about um, midwifery in that time or just that time in general because I think it's a very interesting book. I then finished Transcription by Kate Atkinson and I finished this in late May. This was a really interesting book. Uh, it's a dual narrative, or not dual narrative, dual timeline novel where we start out following a young girl named Juliet who was recruited to work for the, um, like, MI5 during World War II in London, and she is actually the transcriptionist for a man that's pretending to be a, a Gestapo officer and pretending to recruit um, German um, loyal list in England and getting information from them and promising that he'll get them that information in Germany but really he gives it to MI5 and so Julia is involved in this and we see that play out we see her relationships with the uh, person the man Jeff his name is Jeffrey I believe that's posing as the Gestapo agent and then we see uh, 10 years later, after the war, when she works for the BBC as a producer for their um, radio shows, and we see how the war is still impacting her life, because people from the war come back into her life, and she gets caught up in helping uh, people escape from Russia, like people that want to... Um, Effect. And so it's about that, and it just shows how the war uh, is still impacting her life. And the main theme, I would say, is does the war ever really end, and do you ever really get over what happened during the war? And I actually found this kind of confusing in some parts because there is like a uh, plot going on in the 50s that Julia is a part of, and she ends up like meeting one of her old. Uh, supervisor is Jeffrey again actually and he pretends not to recognize her and so then she starts to worry that something's going on and she gets really 
involved in this like bigger movement. So yeah, it's really interesting. I could see myself rereading it just because I did feel like I didn't get everything the first time. And yeah, it was a really interesting book. I definitely recommend it. I know Mel from Mel's Book Glen Adventures raved about this book. And I remember Becky Ford told me one time that she thought it was like a really good Emily book. And I did think I really, I did think it was a real good Emily book, and I could see myself rereading it. So, yeah, this was a really great read. I then finished The Return of the King, uh, which is the third book in the War of the Rings series by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, this was fine. I read it for the War of the Readathon, hosted by Krista from Books and Jam, and I just went ahead and finished it in June. Uh, if you probably know what it's about. Frodo, Sam, getting the ring to Mount Doom, making sure it's destroyed so that Sauron's destroyed. Uh, my read read was fine. It wasn't amazing. I did think it was pretty slow in some parts. I actually think I'm probably never going to re read this series again because this time the reread read wasn't like amazing. But I am gonna still keep my copy on my shelf just for nostalgia purposes because I did really enjoy it the first time I read through the series. But yeah, this was okay. I'm glad I finished it again and the and reading the comments in the good group Goodreads group was interesting too. I then finished Posterity. Letters of Great Americans to Their Children by Dory McCullough Lawson. And this is just what it says. It's a collection of letters written by various famous people, founding fathers, writers, artists, uh, politicians, just all kinds of people. And I read three letters a day and finished it at the very end of the month. And this, it was fine. You know, if you're looking for a collection of letters, I would recommend it. Dory McCullough Dory McCullough Lawson is David McCullough's daughter, as you might guess, and she apparently is a student of history as well. David McCullough does write the foreword of this book, and uh, I will say that this book is very white male-esque, as you might imagine, and considering everything that's been going on lately, it was kind of like uncomfortable to see so blatantly the fact that uh, white men have dominated most of our country's history. So yeah, uh, this was fine, nothing to write home about, but I'm glad I finally read it because it had been on my TBR since 2016. The last book that I finished in June was The Little Old Lady Who Broke All the Rules by Katharina Engelman Sundberg. And I picked this up totally on a whim. I saw it on a list somewhere like early in the month and I was like, ooh, that sounds cute. So I picked it up. Okay, first of all, the title is like really misleading because it's not just about the old lady, it's about a group of people that live in a nursing home, five people, um, two guys and three women that decide that they're going to rob a bank because their nursing home is like terrible and treating them very poorly and they have seen a documentary on TV that talks about how good prisons are in Sweden. They live in Stockholm, Sweden and they decide they're going to rob a bank to get into prison so that they can enjoy themselves. So they start out by actually robbing an art museum. They steal two paintings and they um, successfully steal the paintings, but then they are never caught, so they turn themselves in, they end up in prison, they get out of prison, and then they start working on what they're calling the ultimate crime, and they decide not to rob a bank, but to steal some money from another person that's robbing a bank that they learn about in prison, and this is just like a crazy romp. I mean, it's pretty unrealistic, and some of the characters are kind of like ridiculous, but it, it's a good time. It's cute. It's enjoyable. Uh, if you're looking for a light read, I would recommend it, but it's nothing amazing or anything, but I enjoyed it. It was interesting, and it's very Swedish. Like, I think uh, the Swedish uh, literature is, like, very different than American literature, but I, I have been, I enjoyed the ones I've read. Uh, the last one I read, I think, was A Man Called Uva. But anyway, this was good, you know, pretty fun, light read. 
So that's all I've been reading lately. Uh, currently, I'm rereading Emma by Jane Austen for Jane Austen July. And I'm also reading Valentine by Elizabeth Wetmore. And I'm really, really enjoying Valentine. So get ready for a very gushing review the next time I do a recent reads. But I hope everybody's having a good day and that you had a good 4th of July weekend. If you live here in the States, uh, of course, I know it wasn't very exciting due to uh, coronavirus, but I hope you got to do a little bit of relaxing anyway. But anyway, I hope you're reading something great, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!